I was uh, sent down to uh, meet a lady, casting lady at that time. Her name was Marion Doherty. And uh, Marion said, I have a project uh, that uh, you should go meet on. And so she went with me, as I recall the first time, put me in a cab and went with me and brought me and introduced me to Dan Curtis. And I believe his offices at that time were on Park Avenue in New York. I'm not sure about that. Um, and they asked me to, to do a scene, you know, for him, whatever. So I did a scene from Tennessee Williams' Summer in Smoke. I had had uh, uh, an acting partner that I did these sorts of things with, and she kindly consented to go along with me up to Dan's and do a scene from Summer in Smoke. And Dan had a green carpet, and he had some golf balls laying all over the place. So I remember picking up the golf balls before, uh, a couple of golf balls <laughs> before I did the scene. I did the scene, and uh, he liked it, and uh, decided that he wanted to look at me on camera. So uh, I, a few days later, I went over to 53rd Street, where the studio was, and, uh, you know, was quite uh, innocent and unsophisticated, basically, about it all. Went in, and uh, they took me out on the floor during their, you know, break there or whatever, and looked at me on camera, you know, turn this way, this way, turn this way, hello, how are you, and all of these things, and that was it. And then uh, a few days later, I guess, or soon afterward, I found out that I had gotten the job. And that's basically it. Uh, I, ironically, what had happened was I was looking for a new agent, and uh, I had gone, uh, f uh, somebody I uh, had met had uh, called an agent over at uh, what is now ICM, what used to be Ashley Famous in New York City. And they said, come on up. So I went up there and I did the same scene for them, <laughs> a few agents <laughs> that I did for Dan. Uh, but at that meeting they said, hey, there's this project. That was the first thing I had done. And they said, listen, there's this project called Dark Shadows. It's this show called Dark Shadows. Uh, Marion Doherty's looking for somebody. Will you go and meet her? So the very next day, I went on a meeting. So I hadn't even signed with the agency, and they had sent me down to meet Marion. And uh, so it was uh, quite, uh, uh, quite wonderful. <laughs> That's the story. Uh, it's funny, I, di I didn't know about Dark Shadows, so I was coming into it completely, um, uh, you know, unknowledgeable, uh, not educated about the show had no clue about uh, its uh, following um, uh, at that time, um, and uh, was just uh, quite taken aback <laughs> when, you know, when I r realized uh, what it was. And in fact, during the first uh, two or three months during the show, uh, the character didn't speak. He was a ghost, and uh, he, so he didn't speak at all. Uh, and I was, I sort of, people started teasing me, you know, well, Selby, when you start talking, that'll be the end of you. You know, it'd be like the old silent movie days, you know, when somebody came up with a very high voice, they got rid of you, you know. So I was concerned about that, uh, you know, oh God, they won't like it. But um, fortunately, it turned out uh, to be, you know, fine and whatever. And then, actually, uh, what happened was, it was the only, uh, once I became a little more sophisticated or knowledgeable about the show and everything, and then I realized that we had gone back in time in, for the Quentin story. And it was, uh, in looking back at the show, it was the only time, only other story that wasn't contingent upon Barnabas. I mean, it was totally of its own. And it was quite wonderful. It was a great story, maybe the best story that we did, because uh, just a, a coincidental of factors, the kinds of characters that you had, and the fact that we went back. We went back in time. And they had a good, they had developed a good character, Quentin. Uh, and uh, I was just, uh, happened to be there at that particular time, right place at the right time, and got lucky, and, uh, you know, knock on wood, had, you know, that I was the one chosen to play, Quentin. <laughs> I was always curious as to when is this guy going to talk. That I don't recall being uh, told that uh, eventually you will talk. I mean, I think what happened was we probably stretched that out as long as 
as we could. You know, they got as much mileage out of it as we could, and probably somebody said, Sam or Dan said, Dan probably says, we got to hear this guy talk eventually, you know. And um, so I, I, I do think, and maybe, maybe the letters started coming in. I don't know. They wanted to hear him. I, I, I don't know. But I probably sensed that we had played it out. I mean, we had to move on, you know, out of that. We got it. Uh, Storyline-wise, uh, they got as much mileage out of that as they could at that time, maybe. Uh, certainly, uh, the, 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 the back story of Quentin uh, uh, owes its, uh, um, I don't know, uh, um, is, uh, owes its, uh, what? <laughs> pays homage, let's just say it that way, pays homage to Turn of the Screw. Um, there were other, uh, besides Turn of the Screw, as we followed on down, there was the picture of Dorian Gray. There were various things like that. And certainly these were um, spin-offs of those classic, classic stories. And, and uh, there was absolutely nothing wrong with that. And, and because if you're going to spin off something on that, then you want to use a very classic uh, kind of tale. And, and certainly Turn of the Screw, uh, Picture of Dorian Gray, all of those were were classic in, in, in all of our upbringing. So it's not that we were, we didn't realize that at the time. We knew that and we were just using those stories as a kind of, you know, spin off. And uh, it's quite terrific. But I'm glad Dan chose me. So all of this is indeed his fault. I was, uh, as I say, I was raised in West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. And uh, had always sort of, um, I don't know, had a, I was always dreaming, uh, you know, about various things and what I could do. I think eventually, at first I, because I, I wanted to be a rock and roll star or whatever, man, I was always dreaming those kinds of things. I, I go to movies by myself. I remember going to see Gone with the Wind by myself. Uh, but I met a man when I was a freshman or sophomore in college, and uh, he said, why don't you take an acting class? And he was my advisor. And I was in trouble academically anyway at that time, and I thought, well, I don't know. And he said, can I get a good grade <laughs> or something? He says, well, you look like you're good. <laughs> anyway, I took the class and uh, never looked back. I enjoyed it so much. Then I started being in uh, the university, you know, I started participating in the university plays that they had. I believe the first thing I did was a musical Brigadoon and uh, now only you come to Sandy's booth, come over to Sandy's booth. Da -da -da -dee 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 you know, it was a, you know, it was a, it's a delightful musical actually. And then I did Oklahoma, uh, played Will Parker, it was a musical. Uh, Everything's up to date in Kansas City. They're going about as far as they can go. They went and built a skyscraper seven stories high, about as high as a building ought to grow. And then all of that. And then uh, I started doing, uh, I did a, a comedy role, Mr. Roberts, Ensign Pulver, and, and I loved it. And, and that was, I don't know, the turning. And I said, no, I know this is what I want to do. But I was in West Virginia and didn't know how to uh, get out. And so. Um, I went to school in Illinois for a bit because they'd offered me an assistantship and then I could act out there and then eventually a man, um, making a short story long, but uh, recommended me for an audition up in Chicago and then I started, I went to the Barter Theater in Virginia and then I went to the Cleveland Playhouse and eventually I went to New York and I was doing some off-off Broadway things had just finished a thing with the late Hermione Gingold, I believe. Uh, so had done a few things uh, and then got the call uh, to come on to Dark Shadows. Basically though, all of my training up to that time had been in theater, on the stage. I had done very little. Um, I believe even uh, I did Flatboat Man, but I did that even while I was doing Dark Shadows. So uh, Dark Shadows was the first, uh, you know, television or anything like that that I had done.